In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys the basics of editing wildlife photos in Lightroom. This is an essential skill for wildlife photographers to understand, and um, Lightroom is very, very important to master. And so essentially in this video, what I'm gonna be doing is covering the basics of Lightroom. I'm not gonna get into any sort of advanced techniques or anything like that. Um, just basically portray how you can apply the basics of editing and um, the basics of Lightroom to your wildlife photos in the best way. It's not over-process your photos, but make sure that you don't under-process your photos either. So to just jump right into it, I do have two sample images here that I took in Badlands National Park last year. And um, I think these are both really good examples of um, how you can apply some pretty basic edits to photos in Lightroom and uh, really recover the photos and really improve the overall image and just save what would have been pretty lackluster raw files and turn those into really great photos. And so first of all, one thing that I really do want to mention here is that you should be shooting in raw on your camera. If you don't know what shooting in raw means, basically your photos straight out of camera, if you haven't changed any settings in the camera, come out as JPEG photos. And that's not what you want for editing. You want raw photos because they maintain a lot more of the color detail a lot more just detail in general not just color detail across the spectrum you have a lot more detail maintained in raw photos and um, it, it makes editing and post-processing a lot easier and gives you a lot wider of a range um, of, of options for post-processing your photos so go into your camera um, and, and switch from JPEG to raw it'll be much better for post-processing trust me and there are other videos that go much more in depth on the technicality of raw and all that out there on YouTube I'm not going to go into that but um it's 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 very important to understand and to uh, start shooting in raw as soon as you can so um anyways if you're not shooting in raw start shooting in raw um but these are raw files as you will see here and um this first one here is of a bison in badlands and you've seen this one before likely on the channel i've used it as an example in videos and um it's up on my social media on instagram but i do still want to edit it again i've edited it before but i want to redo it because i think this is a great example image show how powerful lightroom can be as a post-processing tool um, even with just very simple basic edits. So let's go in and first crop this photo. That's the first thing I like to do with photos. Cropping is a very powerful tool that we have that I feel like a lot of people don't utilize enough. It's very underutilized. Um, so we're gonna crop this, I think, to four by five, maybe place the bison somewhere like that. I wanna have him a little bit off to the side um, as far as his body. I don't wanna have him totally centered, um, but I wanna have that face somewhat centered there. So I think that's pretty good. Could also do something like this, do a vertical four by five, but um, I think for this photo, that's a little too tight. I think I'd rather do the horizontal one here. So we're gonna go with that right there. So there's our first edit on the photo, just cropping it in, making it look a little bit better. Um, now the next thing we're gonna do, if you look at the histogram over here, we've got a lot of our color detail is way up here overexposed. Um, so I wanna bring that down a little bit. And, um, you know, even though we're crushing the blacks in the animal there, we'll raise those back up. We're just trying to get some of that color detail back down. So we're gonna bring that exposure down a little bit. And, um, and then I'm gonna just slide this contrast up to about maybe eight. Don't wanna move that that much. I'm gonna use the tone curve down here, which I know is getting a little more advanced than maybe the basics um, and, and what this video is really supposed to be about. But I think it's a pretty powerful tool that is actually very simple to learn. People just, you know, look at it and don't understand it. So I will use that and kind of show how that works here in a moment. Um, but first I want to raise the shadows up in my vice in there um, and maybe even bring my highlights down in the background. As you can see in the histogram here, we're bringing things into a lot better of a color scale here and overall just making this photo look a lot better already from what it looked like to now. And to just briefly explain shadows and highlights and all this stuff to those of you that don't actually understand and know about this already, um, essentially it's very, very simple. The name basically explains it. Your blacks are your very dark black parts of the image. Your whites are your very bright white parts of the image. Your highlights and shadows are the areas that fall in between. The highlights being the brighter stuff and the shadows being the darker stuff. Overall pretty simple and that's just how those work. Just wanted to briefly throw that in there and explain that for those of you that haven't used Lightroom before and don't understand all these different terms. Now getting back to editing these photos, bring those whites a little bit down, bring the blacks up, basically just bring all that detail in. Maybe even bring the whites a little bit higher. Do something like that. Um, I want to drop those blacks and shadows a little. That's a little bit too much, I think, but right there is good, should be good. And then we're going to go in and uh, boost the vibrance. And I don't like to play with saturation too much. I usually only do vibrance, but a little bit on this photo, maybe bring that back down. I think that's a little overdone. Bring saturation back down to zero. 
you know, you want to have that color in there, but you don't want to have too much color. So I feel like that's pretty good right there on vibrant. Um, but then tone curve here, I want to raise this a little bit. And basically what you have on the tone curve to briefly explain it um, up right here, you have highlights in this little highlighted area. And then right down here, you can see your area of highlighted area there on the tone curve grows. And uh, that is your lights. And then you move on down into your darks and your shadows. And basically when you lift these up, it brightens it up. As you can see there, when you lift that up, that's brightening up my highlights. If I bring that down, then that darkens the highlights. And that's basically all you're doing with this tone curve. So I'm gonna move these around a little bit, just add a little bit of contrast to the photo. And I'm liking that, we'll bring this contrast slider, I think all the way back down. I think we had too much with the tone curve there. And then we'll go down here to sharpening. I always like to sharpen a little bit on these photos. Um, and basically what you can do here is uh, if you see this masking slider right down here, what you can do is press your option key and then you're gonna slide this slider over and all the areas that are highlighted in white are areas that are gonna be sharpened with your sharpening tool so that's just a way to really make the wildlife pop in your photo i always or almost always use sharpening on my wildlife photos because um, you can really blow out that background and um, not sharpen that at all really leave it blurry and soft and uh, sharpen that animal up and make it really stand out so i always like to add a little bit of sharpening and then you can always you know play with these sliders as well but i find that 40 is a pretty solid base setting for that on most photos um, and then we'll go down here and um, you can remove chromatic aberrations I always do that on any image and then if you want to enable profile correction i think on this one i'll leave it i like the dark edges a little bit more but you can always work on that too and uh, you know do the profile correction that's typically a lot more necessary for photos that are shot with a wide angle lens not really as necessary with a photo like this so next here we're going to go into the hsl and um, color sliders and i really really like using this portion of lightroom because it allows for you to manipulate the colors in the photo in a very specific and intentional manner and um, you know choose certain colors that you want to saturate and brighten up choose other ones that you might want to dim down so for example in this image i think we need a lot more color in this grass in this yellow grass so i'm going to bring up the saturation on that a little bit um, and maybe even bring my hue up a little bit maybe down actually a little more orange um, and darken it a little bit and then we'll go over maybe to our greens and saturate those a little bit um, go over to our purples. I think these need to be brought down. There's a little bit too much purple in the bison in my opinion um, But maybe in our oranges and we can saturate those colors in this bison and in the grass there You can see how much that does for the grass right there by bringing up saturation So I'll bring that up and yeah You can basically just play with all the different color channels in here and you can see how those affect the image You can see that is affecting a lot of those reds on the bison there. So, um, you know, you can play with that I'll bring those up a little bit and uh, kind of make the colors on the animal pop a little bit more there and then the last thing that i'm going to do for this image um, before i get into vignetting is um, sliding the um, temperature a little bit up here so what you have up here is your white balance basically you can adjust temperature and tint and for this one i'm going to warm this image up a little bit um, maybe that's a little too much just just a tad you don't have to play with it too much just a tad and uh, bring the image up a little bit. So I think that right there is pretty close to what I want. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do to add a little bit more emphasis on the bison in this photo is I'm gonna go in here and do one of these radial filters. And basically what I'm gonna do is place this right around the bison and um, leave him, you know, leave all the areas outside highlighted um, and leave him in the center without the radial filter. And I'm just gonna drop my exposure on the outside edges and I uh, kind of vignette in on the bison there and uh, that really adds a lot and uh, is a, has a nice effect on the photo and I might even drop my clarity a little bit to blur those edges a little more and there's your finished edit so pretty simple and um, we'll just go in and you can see right here if I go back down to the import there's what it looked like when we started and then here is the finished image so you can see a lot changed in between that original image and um, what we have here you know so many of those colors were washed out and um you know just just generally your color detail was all over the place and um, we brought that all in darkened the image down a little brightened the bison up and um, added in a lot of saturation to really make the colors pop and make the image overall just stand out and then obviously like i said you know at the end there added that vignette on the edges to bring the detail in towards the bison or bring your focus in towards the bison so i feel like that's a pretty solid edit on that one and that's a pretty basic edit i mean you know there's a lot more advanced things you can do in lightroom and photoshop or that right there is just a very simple basic edit um, and uh, basic use of the sliders here in Lightroom to um, you know make what was just kind of a mediocre washed out raw file 
into a pretty solid photo here. So now we're gonna move over to this photo and uh, this is one that I'm gonna do a lot of work on with the white balance and that's why I selected this photo to uh, include in this video because it needs a lot of work done with white balance here. So first thing that I'm gonna do is go in again and crop it down um, and what I wanna do is try to crop this prairie dog out. That's just a distraction in the image, no need to have him in it. So I'm gonna try to crop this way in. So we'll go I think with that crop on this photo. And I think that works pretty decently. I'm um, not perfect by any means and way more cropped in than I usually would like to. Um, you know, this is for a 24 megapixel camera. You can crop a lot, but still, I think this is more than I typically like to. But again, that's just for an example for this video. So no big deal there. Um, but as you can see in our histogram, everything is right here in the center. We really have zero color in this image. It's very just grayed out here as you can see and we're going to try to fix that. It's going to be our main goal in this because as far as shadows and highlights and all this in here goes and exposure, this is pretty darn good. There's really no need to mess around with any of that too much. I will move this contrast up just a little bit, uh, maybe to 10, but that's really all I need to do. There's not much there. Uh, main thing here is color recovery. So the first thing that I'm going to start with is sliding this vibrance up. A little bit um, and you can see that helped a little but not as much as we would like to have this um, it still looks you know just the, the color balance just looks a little funky um, and I think it's a little bit too blue so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna warm this up a little bit you can see we're starting to get a little bit of separation on that histogram so that's good um, we may slide our purples down a little bit I don't know I think tint is actually pretty good so we may go up with this a little more do something like that. So just warming it up a little bit. Then we'll go down here into the HSL and color again. And um, maybe we will pull out these greens some. I think those could be improved. Um, you know, you can always play with luminance too and uh, brighten those up or darken them. I think pretty good here in the center on this one. But we may bring the hue, mm, I'm thinking down like that. Um, that looks good on hue. Then obviously in this image, um, we've got a lot of tans and uh, oranges and grays and um, yellows. So you can see how much of that affects this image by sliding that saturation slider there. So what I think I'm going to do is move that up just a little bit, not too much, and then I'm going to go over to orange. And uh, see, that's the big one there that's really going to have an impact. So I'm going to bring the oranges up a pretty good amount. Um, I think I'll keep my luminance right where it's at. Maybe bring my hue down. And um, we're getting more color in this, but it still looks a little bit funky. So there's still a little bit of work to do. And um, we do have some more advanced things that we could do. We have color grading here, um, and then we have, you know, tone curve, we can adjust the colors. But I don't want to get into any of that. I want to try to do this with some of the more simple things, because like I said, I'm trying to mostly keep this, uh, the basics of editing wildlife photos. So I think we're going to stick within the tabs that we have here, open the, the um, you know, color tabs, and just, you know, your, your white balance and vibrance and all that, and try to do this with more of the simple tools. Um, because I don't really want to get into advanced techniques. That's not the point of this video. Um, and then I'm not actually going to sharpen this photo. I typically would do that, but I'm not going to do it on this one because um, it's so noisy where I've not only had to shoot at, you know, 1250 ISO, but also where I've cropped in so much that sharpening wouldn't really do much for this image. What this is actually going to need is denoising. And um, I would actually, if I were to go through the full edit of this photo, what I would do after I finished all these post-processing things, um, with all the different sliders in here in Lightroom is I would go in and open this in Topaz Denoise AI. And um, it's basically, if you don't know what Topaz is, it's a very intelligent denoising software. And I did do a video on that, which you can check out if you would like. Um, but it's basically just a very intelligent denoise software for images like this that need a little bit of denoising done. Um, so that would be the next step in this after I finish fixing all the colors and uh, all the other post-processing that I want to do. But I'm not going to sharpen it because it doesn't need that. What this is actually going to need is denoising. But what we are going to continue to do is try to fix these colors. So what I may do is slide this tint a little bit more now. And then, as always, I will add a vignette. So we could go ahead and do that to this photo. And we'll just bring that down a little bit. Um, very subtle, but it does, you know, help bring the focus in towards the center of the frame, towards the animal. And sometimes I'll even add two vignettes. Um, one that brings your focus in towards the animal and then one that just kind of clips the edges of the photo, do something like that. So that just, you know, adds a little bit of mood and, uh, you know, really pulls your eye in towards the brightest part of the frame on the animal there, um, which I think can be very, very helpful. Um, but going back into colors, I, I think we need to do a little bit more work here for sure. Um, and I think our greens are really lacking here. Still struggling with this blue cast on the face that could be maybe adjusted locally with a radial filter like this. So sometimes this is what I'll do to adjust colors. 
um, do a radio filter like this and then click that switch right there and um, you can see that inverts it and puts it on the inside of the radio filter rather than the outside. And then we can go up here and we can adjust our temperature accordingly. So I'll bring our temperature up a little bit. You can always adjust the hue as well. And I think that fixed a little bit of that blue cast on his face there. Um, there's still a little bit of green, so maybe I will pull it towards purple on the tint. And then I think the last thing we'll do is bring vibrance up to 20 maybe. And um, that's looking pretty decent there. Uh, I'm liking that pretty well. I think for basic edit, that looks pretty good on these two. Um, I think I'll go ahead and run this photo through Topaz anyways, just so that you can get an idea of what that looks like um, when it's actually sharpened and um, uh, denoised and all that. And like I said, if you wanna see the details of how Topaz works and um, you know what exactly it does for your photos, you can check out that video as you can see once you do run the photo through topaz and it's sharpened and denoised um, you get a nice clean background and everything here and i think that we've got a pretty good photo with that overall i think we've fixed what was wrong with this photo for the most part and you can just see if we click over to the original here and we click on our imported photo here's what it originally looked like very grayed out just terrible colors in that and just not at all of a good image and then you can see the finished image here and you can just see how much of that color that we saved there and how we really just saved the photo by bringing it into Lightroom um, and so that is the basics of editing photos in Lightroom um, like I said a very bare bones stuff didn't go into some of the more detailed and difficult stuff um, but this shows just how powerful those basic sliders can be and how much literally just learning the basics and using the basics can improve your photos and save photos that seemed irrecoverable. Um, so honestly, really happy with how both of these examples turned out. And I think these were really great examples to use for this. We had this first image here with the bison where you have some very blown out whites, but also some very crushed blacks in here. And um, how using Lightroom's tools with, you know, um, raising your shadows and dropping your highlights and uh, all of that, you can really bring all of that back in and, um, you know, make that histogram fit more in the middle and basically just take that contrast, that stark contrast that you don't want, these really blown out whites and crushed blacks and bring those in to where it's not got that contrast and uh, you've got detail in all of your really bright whites and in your dark blacks. And the whole photo looks even color wise and contrast wise. Um, just like it would to your eye in the moment. So I think this is a really good example of showing how you can work with those shadows and highlights in Lightroom to uh, recover a photo. And then obviously over here on the Prairie Dog one, we had a photo that had basically zero color left in it and uh, that the white balance was really off on and just was really funky on. Um, and basically we're able again to use the basics to show how um, you can recover a photo like that and you can bring all that color back and uh, repair um, white balance issues that your camera might have had um, or that you know maybe you messed up in the camera and um, bring the photo back and really sa save a photo honestly I mean this was just a terrible photo beforehand and I really think we were able to save it with um, all the different white balance and color tools here in Lightroom. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the basics of Lightroom. I hope that these were good examples and this video was helpful for you all. If you did like this video and found it helpful, please let me know by dropping a like down below and um, commenting, let me know what you all thought. And uh, most importantly, as always, please do not forget to subscribe to be entered for the 1000 subscriber Manatee Swim giveaway. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.